My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being with us this morning. Do me a favor, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. I'm Tanis Babas, and I'm coming in from Cold Lake, Alberta, Canada. And uh, Alberta, Canada. it's a beautiful place. How's the weather in Canada? Pardon me? How's the weather in Canada? Um, our summer has been up and down. We've had lots of rain, but we've had some really good sunshiny days. That is awesome. Yeah, we're in LA, so we get a lot of sun. So I'm looking forward to some rain. But when it rains, people can't drive, so we might have that issues. But um, it's all good. Let's dive into Thinking Growish and Napoleon Hill. When did you get started? How did you get started? Um, I got started with Napoleon Hill as it was a recommended book when I um, – got into uh, doing affiliate marketing. I never read the book um, when I was um, doing my life coaching. I had actually never heard of it. And once I read the book, I realized how important this book really truly is in life because what it states when the book was written was how we look at the universe and how we look at how things transpire, how we visualize, how we have faith in everything that we do in order to have a positive um, outlook on life. And I can't believe that way back when they were writing this and we're still practicing it today. And it really works, it, it truly does. And I still look back at my book always because I've highlighted, I've, I've read it like, I don't know how many times and I've listened to it and <laughs> I have the same one. And I've listened to it. So it was about uh, two and a half years ago when I got involved in, in affiliate marketing. And that's how I uh, came about uh, reading it and, and loving everything it stands for. Love it. So what are some of the principles? Uh, if you could point out like one or two principles that you utilize today in your day-to-day -day life or your business that we should uh, kind, of, uh, kind of give us a little bit of a detail of how you implement those. Because knowing the principles is one thing, but being able to apply it is different. Well, I apply the principles daily. I have um, what I call a five-pillar um, morning routine that I do every single day. And I start off with my gratitude. I start, and then I go into meditation. Then I go into reading every day. I wasn't a reader before. I struggled with reading. I love reading personal growth books. I love reading improvement, how to improve my life. So um, that's the third pillar. Um, the next one is exercise. And the last one is listening to audios. So I implement that every day for, for the success of my business and for my success in life. And my favorite part of the book was chapter three on faith because you truly, truly have to have faith when you are visualizing and manifesting what you want in life because it's there, but it's not there yet. And you have to have faith that's coming and you have to be open to receiving and to giving. That is awesome. So let me ask you a question. A lot of individuals, initially when they read the book, just because, you know, if anybody goes through it the first time around, a lot of times individuals confuse faith with religion. Can you tell us what is that difference for you? How, how do you differentiate those two for yourself? Um, faith is I have faith in myself. I have faith in the universe will bring to me what I ask for. I have faith that what I want in life is coming. I, I have faith in a lot of things. I have faith in God too, and that, and that is different, um, but somehow similar. And anyone can have faith. You don't have to believe in any one thing, but having faith that something will transpire, that faith will bring you what you want in life is, is how I look at it. I don't look at going to church and, and pray to God because I can do that anywhere. And I can talk to the universe anywhere. And I can talk to God anywhere. And there are similarities and they are the same. And I believe that God and the universe 
and everything is all one because we're all energy and we all are one and we came from the same. I agree with that 100%. You said it well. Thank you. What are what are some of the other principles that you're utilizing on your daily basis? Um consistency and what does that mean? Consistency doing yes. something every day, um uh, making sure that you put forth an effort and taking action just because you want to have something and you want to transpire and you want to visualize it. We can do all the dreaming and visualizing we want. but we need to take action we need to come up with solutions we need to find ways and having that faith opens up the doors that solutions will come to us what we're looking for ends up showing up what if i'm consistently doing the wrong thing what if you're consistently doing the wrong thing oh my goodness that's my problem is maybe my direction and my path just because maybe i didn't know i wasn't coached on it i wasn't trained on it i didn't have a mentor i think i'm doing the right thing constantly but it's on the wrong path how do you at what point should you say do you observe the results do you say no let's just do it and hope for the best or how do you do that because i see that happening where individuals they get a direction or they come up with a plan and the, and 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 a, and and i don't know if you could call it a direction I I I think I like the word path much more. So I am on the right path. I think I'm on the right path. But if I come outside my bubble, I might see that this is not going to get me to the results. So at what point do I kind of, you know, do that little adjustment so that it does ensure me to get to the results? Cuz I see a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners, if they do a little tweaking here and there, I think the results would be a lot astronomical or it will have that compounding effect but a lot of times they're not doing adjustment you know past 5 years they made $100,000 as not going up or in the past 3 years they made 200,000 it didn't go to 300,000 you know past 10 years they've been in the same field and they only have two locations it's not going up how do you how do you detect that and what would be the remedy for it or what is your suggestion for it okay i'm going to attempt to answer this as best i can First of all, I don't make goals or plans. I have intentions. I put intentions out. And I use my passion and my purpose to follow that intention. And when I feel I'm not getting results or when I feel I'm stuck because sometimes we get stuck, I realize that what needs to happen is what got me to this space was the right thing and the right place and the right time to do those things but now i'm stuck so i need to change what i'm doing because what i'm doing obviously isn't bringing me to the next level so i need to find a solution to bring me to that next level and do things differently and also i need to grow and when you're stuck that means you're not learning and you're not bringing in the information to help you grow and when you grow so does the rest of your life grow so we always have to be open to opportunities to allow those changes to happen you have to realize that when you're not getting where you want to go a change needs to happen and you have to be open to that change Does that answer your question? That does. And 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 this is another thing that 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 I learned a long time ago. I think the only constant is change. But I think a lot of us are afraid of change. And change is pretty scary or it could be scary. But if it's scary and you have fear, I think it's going to help you grow. I think if you're comfortable and there's nothing scary or 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 you don't fear it, I think you're stagnating and you you may not get to where you want to go or there's no growth. So to me, you walk through your fears and and you conquer that. But I could also see how a lot of individuals fear kind of stops them from taking the next step because of it's the uncertainty of what would happen if I do this because now I'm getting out of my comfort zone. So a lot of times people need 
someone to hold their hand and kind of get them over the hump that says, hey, I got your back. Don't worry about it. In the form of a life coach, mentor, consulting, whatever you guys want to call it, right? Or a book or, or a good audible or whatever. The, or it could be your faith. It could, if, you, if you're a man of God, you know, it's, it's your church or, or whoever that you go there that you trust that could kind of take you there. But that's where I see a lot of business owners. They're open-minded till they get scared. Once they get scared and the fear comes in, then they're no longer open-minded. They say they're open-minded. But maybe in action, it's more difficult to implement being open-minded versus just talking about it. I, I absolutely agree with you. And, and I have this little saying that fear is an opportunity to be courageous. What we should be fearing is being comfortable and staying where we're at. We shouldn't fear where we want to go. Which is the scariest thing to me. I mean, any type of... I mean, anything in this, you know, I mean, everything is moving. So I don't know where somebody came up with that idea of just stagnating and just being, everything is moving. We're changing, you know, and just even our body, you know, none of my, 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 even my, all my cells have already been replaced a couple of times in my lifetime already. So I am not who I was 10 years ago. You know, something is in there. I'm not going to get all, you know, philosophical on us and, and use big terminology, but this is not who I was 10 years ago. So even physically, which we could literally see, is going through those changes and all that. So um, after my daughter, I'm definitely not me anymore because it's, it's a different ball game. So if you're out there, you want your life to change, just get married and have a kid, your life will change, whether you like it or not. So, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's very rewarding, but it's also not easy to do. It's... It takes a lot of hard work. You got to work at it, especially if you're a parent and now you're responsible for another livelihood of somebody else. That's a different, uh, that's a different story. I agree. I agree. Becoming a parent is, uh, it's huge. It's huge. It's a huge change in life because you're not only responsible for yourself, you're now responsible for a small child as well. And that brings on a whole new uh, ball of wax. Like, it's just, Ooh. it's different. And, uh, I agree with that yeah. 100%. And, and but would you, wouldn't you agree, or somebody becoming an entrepreneur and opening a business is the same thing as having a baby? Yeah, because it's brand new. It's it's brand new and you're raising it. Um, and, and you're I'm, responsible I, I, for it. Yeah, you're responsible for your business. You're responsible to show up. You're responsible to be consistent. You're responsible to... Um, to take it to the next level because that's where you that's why you opened a business was to be successful and to get where you want to go so yeah it's like having a child and and raising it and as it grows you become more proud and as it flourishes and then one day it's gonna bloom it's going to become something that you are very proud of and one day you gotta let go because you can't keep your kids in the house till till forever so that's right at some point you gotta let them fly so sometimes with our businesses sometimes we gotta let them just you know it, it takes its own course you supervise you you mentorship you you still are there you you put your opinion and all that but sometimes i see some business owners you know after 10 20 years they're still in their business they're working in their business versus working on their business so it's a little bit of a you know you gotta you gotta let your kids and go and experiment and yeah. be okay with them failing a little bit, you know, and then they come back. They do. They always come back. <laughs> yeah, for advice. You don't, you don't have them moving in anymore. Just for advice. <laughs> it's temporary. You give them oh, advice and you let them Mine work. have so come back to, and moved in and moved out and moved in and moved out. So it happens. Um, that is awesome. That is awesome. I, I just want to mention to you that I put your handle. Uh, I, I pinned it at the bottom. So if anybody needs to get a hold of you and, and kind of, pick your brain on anything and you give them a, a little bit of uh, your input on business and different things, because I know you have been a life coach and, and you practice that. So I think it will be a good, uh, good opening. If you're open to it, I know some people are going to reach out to you and, and hopefully you'll be able to kind of uh, give them a little bit of a pointers, especially for our younger um, audiences, because a lot of them are looking for mentors and mentorship. So that would be a good, uh, I appreciate you opening up your time to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Thank you so much for being with us today. 
Hopefully you enjoy the wedding in Canada. Yeah, it was an honor. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.